So legends, today we have the beautiful Marie Bristol, also known as the modern day hippie mum. And she is known for this way, which I'll let you tell her own story in a little bit. But basically, she lives in the US, Connecticut with her husband and four children and takes on a more holistic approach to life, especially when it comes to her health, body and her mind. So she's integrated this in a, in a variety of different forms in terms of healthcare, but she's also a licensed massage therapist. Um, and like the rest of us, we kind of find our way to healing through having kind of that catalyst moment. So it, in her story, she's had many years of not dealing with stress that well. And within that, she found her passion for yoga and actually decided to become a yoga instructor within all of that. So yeah, as well, she is a young living brand partner and chooses to take care of her family's health and tries to limit the toxins that come into her home. So we're so exposed to toxins, not just in the way that we speak and we act, but also in the air and the food that we eat. Um, so I'm really, really curious to see and hear more about Marie's uh, journey into that path because, yeah, she's just a beautiful soul that I came across. It seemed like she had an incredible story. So I'm excited to hear it as much as I'm sure my viewers and my listeners will be. So come on in, Marie. And I hope it's not Mary if I've been butchering that from the beginning. <laughs> no. <laughs> good morning. It's Marie. You're good. You're all good. You. How are you? So well. Good, good. So thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be here and kind of share just a little bit. I heard something the other day about um, turning your mess into a message. And I thought that's so good that we can take kind of our broken pieces and kind of paste them together and share our stories with others and good can come from that. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And so I'm excited to be here because I think so many of us, especially as moms, deal with stress or the lack of dealing with stress. And I did that for so many years. And it was really hard to even recognize what was going on because I can remember, and I this came to me last night, um, before I had my first child and she's 22 now. So she's, you know, a little adult. You and don't even look like you're old enough to have a 22 year old kid. If anybody is watching this, <laughs> you are just like the most beautiful soul. I'm like, aren't you the same age as me? How do you have a 20? Uh, <laughs> that's because I, I lie and I say I'm 29 all the time, but really <laughs> pretty soon I'm not gonna be able to say that, but thank you. Um, and I remember right, three weeks before she was born, I had a birthday and my mom has always been like a really thoughtful, cool gift giver. And she, so I'm opening up my present and it was a breastfeeding pillow and a breastfeeding cover. And I remember looking at her like, what, what? Where, is there anything else? There's gotta be something else. What is this? And she looked over at me and I never forget this. She looked at me and she said, oh, honey, it's not about you anymore. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, damn. And I took that though. And I think I kind of went to the extreme with it yeah. where I was never putting myself first or second or third and probably not even seventh, if I'm being honest, most of the time. And so that led through many years of just, you know, I had thyroid disease in my 20s that I ended up healing naturally because I refused to get radiation done. And then about four years ago, I hit rock bottom. Like there's like even below <laughs> rock bottom. I had, I'm definitely one, I think a lot of people are too, where we just kind of like stuff comes up and you shove it under the rug, right? It's like, okay, there it is. I'll deal with that or I won't deal with it. And it's going to be fine. It's fine. I'm always like, if you ask me how I am nine times out of 10, I'm fine, <laughs> right? We always tend to be, I'm fine, but are we really fine? And I was also very growing up, you know, I was always told 
you're the strong one. You're strong. You're strong. You're strong. You can do this. You're strong. Like I heard that. And I believe that, but I think eventually if we're not allowed to bend, mm. we break Yeah, and I broke. And I think that, um, it was really hard time a few years ago. Like I just was like, I'd had enough. I had gone through a couple of years of not dealing. My dad had died and we were super close and just not really dealing with that. Like I had, you know, had those initial cries and all of that, but I was sad and I didn't really talk about it. I'm not a big talker in some aspects, which kind of seems here weird because here I am talking, right? But in general about myself, not so much. Like you're not going to get the nitty gritty out of me, but I've learned in the last few years that we really need to communicate better yeah. as a people in general. Like we're just like, I'm always trying to tell my kids, talk to me, tell me how your day is, you know, and trying to get things out of them because I don't want my children to be adults who don't know how to communicate what they're feeling. Because when we don't know how to communicate what we're feeling, I think we end up where I was a few years ago. Babe, I um, I just love like what you say there. Like, as much as I want to wear these blue blocks for the um, the we're we're both wearing our blue blocks glasses for yes. the you know for the benefits that they say. But I just feel like it has that disconnect. I just want to stare into the camera and squeeze yeah. it. But I don't know if you've ever heard of um when we say fine, and I I'm okay with swearing, but it's like um an acronym that I associate to that is like fucked up, insecure, neurotic, or emotional. And, um, you know, when we say oh, it's fine, like, and I can completely relate to you saying that because we, we get so passionate about getting what we're praised for. Right. So, you know, right. when I look at you and when I see you as you are, it's like you have that beautiful feminine energy. But when we're saying we're fine and we're just getting by, sometimes that can be us stepping out of our essence and into that masculine energy, which isn't, you know, you at your core. So I, I would love for you to speak to um, your journey through yoga and how that's allowed you to connect back to understanding both when it's appropriate to step into feminine and both appropriate to step into your masculine how you kind of approach that these days yes let me just say first of all it's kind of cool that you call that out because a few years ago I would definitely say I had more masculine energy but I'm definitely kind of a um, a go-getter I kind of lost my feminine side if in all aspects of that and motherhood I, I didn't know who the hell I was four years ago to be honest with you and I just kind of I've lost all of that and I got super sick a few years ago and I didn't know what was wrong and ended up being uh -uh, stress shocking and my cortisol levels were that of someone who was basically being chased by a bear around the clock and it was horrible and I felt like crap all the time and I needed to get it under control. So I, I saw a naturopath doctor and first she had recommended yoga and I am one who, yeah, I can't sit still. I like the whole thought process that I had around that of kind of like, you know, sitting in Lotus and, and chanting and like, you know, letting my mind go, that just was not jiving with me at all. And, but when you have high cortisol levels, you cannot do like high intensity workouts because that increases your cortisol. So you really kind of have to find this sweet spot to, to get some exercise and to get some stress relief, but you can't overdo it. And so my, uh, my best friend, she said, we're going to do yoga. And I said, no. <laughs> and then, you know, four days later, an Amazon box arrives and it's a yoga mat and yoga blocks. And I called her and I'm like, what the hell? And she's like, we're just going to do it. And so we, we decided to do this. She's like, let's just do it. I think it was like 30 days. We're just going to do 30 days of yoga. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing that you need to know about, I am extremely competitive. Like my older children won't play games with me now because I just am like, I'm out for blood. I don't know. <laughs> never played a game of Candyland and like let a kid win just to win. Like I just, you got to learn how to lose. Like, it's just like, <laughs> and so it's, it's kind of a little toxic trait of mine. I admit that. And, 
so I said, no, let's not do 30 days. Let's do a hundred days. Cause I knew I really had to like set the bar heart high for me to do this, to watch, to do this. And so we got like the Peloton app and I would pick the yoga things. And the first week I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. But I knew, I said, let's, we're going to, I'm going to have to post it on Instagram because if I don't post it on Instagram that I'm doing this, I'll never stick with it. I need, I need some accountability. Right. And I hated it. I literally, I'm like, this is dumb. I don't want a downward dog. I don't want like Shavasana. That's still, I will admit to you now as a a registered yoga instructor, Shavasana laying down there. It's hard. That's it's hard for me. It's just hard for me to sit still and to be with myself, but I'm learning. Like it's it's a process. And I think we're always learning and growing within ourselves. And about week three, you got to remember too, I guess, let me back up a little bit. When we had started this, I was down and I'm not, you can see I'm like, I have a big sweatshirt on now, but I'm not a big person in general. I'm pretty tiny. And I was down about 20 pounds. I had lost all muscle tone. I mean, the cortisol had wrecked. I couldn't even carry a gallon of milk. Like that's how weak I was. It was a whole other level. And so I was not sure how this was going to work. And by week three in yoga, I was like, wow, I, I, I think I almost see a little bicep there. Like mm-hmm. I was starting to just go, oh, wow, I can hold poses. I can. And I was just kind of feeling better about myself and there was a shift there was a shift mentally and I fell in love with it which is so weird for me to say with my personality but I was like this is kind of cool and then I think it was around the sixth week and I'm not I'm still I'm not a crier like I can cry at commercials other people's stuff but for me now, when things are going on, like it'll get right there, you'll see the tears. And then I'm like, nope, like I just, my whole body, I think it's just this, I need to be strong, right? I have this, I need to be strong. And it was about six weeks in tears. I was like having tears come down when I was on the mat. And I did not know how to deal with that. I'm like, this is weird. And I always videotape like in time lapse for my Instagram. And I'm like, oh my God, I hope no one is seeing that I'm crying as I'm in warrior two, you know, like I'm doing all these things and I'm like, no. And, but it was a nice release. I have not had one like that since then, like full disclosure, I'm still kind of um, tight tiered like that, but it was just an interesting way. I think when we get on the mat and I don't have like, I don't know how the day is going to go, right? Some days I can be really strong and I'm, and I, my balance is on and other days, my balance is not so great. And it's kind of like that in real life, right? We kind of have days where everything is perfect and other days where it's like, well, shit, tomorrow's going to be better. And it's kind of like that on the map, but it, it's just a different way for me to kind of deal with stress. And I, and I love it. And then I was just like, I, you know, I had some friends like, you should teach, you should teach. And, uh, I don't know. And then I decided um, to do that. And so in typical Marie fashion, I had a year to finish the program and I did it in three months because, you know, <laughs> why not? And so it's just been a fun, um, just kind of a fun thing just to, to deal with and And I know I've had a lot of people reach out to me and they're like, oh, I'm not flexible. Well, you don't have to be flexible. You're not, it's actually harder, I think, to do yoga when you're too flexible, to be honest. And um, just meeting yourself where you're at. That's the one thing I've kind of, um, and I've enjoyed, honestly, the femininity with it. Because as a mom, I got so caught up in, I just wanted to be the best mom Mm. like that. I can remember as a young child, like, okay, middle school, I read cheaper by the dozen and I wanted 12 kids. Like I, 
I don't remember thinking like I wanted a husband. I just remember wanting 12 kids and like how cool that would be. And let me tell you, I have a, a daughter and then three boys, but my, my two boys, they're the older. And then we kind of started over again with my six-year-old. And those two boys were basically like 12 kids. <laughs> they were into everything and all over. And thank God I didn't have 12 kids. But I, I just remember that I, I wanted kids and I just loved the thought of being a mom. Mm. And the problem with that though, is that when they got older, they don't kind of need you in all the same ways, right? That they do as the younger. I'm not changing all the diapers. They're kind of finding out who they are. They're working They're you know, and I think it was kind of that moment. It's kind of another thing yoga kind of helped me with is, okay, who am I outside of being a mom? Right. And I got to tell you, I didn't know who the hell I was. I, I did not feel feminine anymore at all. I kind of just felt exhausted, <laughs> to be honest. I didn't know what I liked. I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was just a really, it's kind of a scary place to be, to be honest with you, when you're, you're, you're this whole person, but what are you? What am I outside of a mom? And I, I think I felt guilty too, because like you're a mom and, and I, I felt so much pride in that. And, you know, and my kids will tell you like, and I am by far a perfect mom. I, I could call any one of them out here at any moment and they would be like, let me tell you about my mom. <laughs> you know, like, I have faults. I am not perfect. Um, but my kids know at the end of the day, like mom loves them fiercely, like fiercely. And, um, but I didn't know. And it was just, you know, like stupid things like, you know what? I'm going to pull my heels back out of my closet. I haven't worn heels. I don't think in a decade. Yeah. I like heels. And it's just dumb stuff like that. But, and, you know, my son plays basketball, my oldest son, and they would kind of make fun of me at the basketball games. Like, oh, there's Mrs. Bristol in her heels. Cause that's how I'm going to the basketball game. I'm not going heels, you know, like, but it made me feel good. Like, cause I don't go to the office every day. I don't, you know, for some people that's not important. And I just think too, cause we're all different when we look at self-care, right? Self-care is like such a big hot word right now, mm. which is great. And, but that looks different for everybody, right? Totally. <laughs> And you look at, and I think too, and I'm going to get a little bit on my, my soapbox is if you look at the young moms and I think about going back through that, it was like, oh, you got a shower today. Oh, well, there's your self-care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a basic need for a dad. Right. Right. And so, but we kind of get caught up into that and sorry, I'm going to get off that now, but I think it's important that we all kind of look at what self, because yoga is not going to be for everybody. I do think it should be for everybody because I think it's kind of a neat, it's just different, but that doesn't mean that Sundays, I don't want to just go hide in the closet and eat some chocolate too. Or if you know me well, it's going to be some bacon because I can put down a pound of bacon like nobody. <laughs> Girl, I think we're more slow systems than you realize and everything that you're saying. I'm like, oh, you can, I'm actually just going to leave you to interview yourself because this is set and um, take the stage away. But if I'm, if I'm to cut in here and to, and to really direct this and kind of reflect back what you've been saying to me is that, sure, you know, what you've been saying and, and even still the processes that you've been going through is that there is still this uncertainty and an, a, a certain level of uncomfortable action when you step into parasympathetic because even in being able to cry you have to be able to allow yourself to step into the parasympathetic nervous system so even like on that what you might have seen as like a minute detail is like that element of you crying and letting yourself do that is like how many years have you not been allowing yourself to express that inner essence of you? And even when it still comes up of like, oh, I want to hit, wear heels and I want to put makeup on, you know, something that even going through yoga stuff, I felt like 
oh, you know, I love being minimalist, but there was a part of it that felt attached to the lifestyle of being a yogi or a yogini and living even in scarcity with like money. And it's like, well, I shouldn't wear heels and I shouldn't wear makeup and I shouldn't look like this. But it's like, what does my like soul calling feel like? I want to wear crystals and I want to wear heels and I want to look pretty and feel like a girl at times. But you can still be, you know, that... Um, that fiery, beautiful soul that you are and and come across authentically and come across as down to earth, even in your go-getter heels and um, and all of that kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a really interesting journey, whether you go through the process of discovering yoga or something else that brings you to that point of going, hey, you know what, whatever is making me a better person and actually put the mirror onto myself to look at what's triggering me. Um, like, yeah, I literally don't care if someone does yoga or not. Cause I define yoga as um, moving you from point A to point B. So like from where you've been to where you want to go. So I think so many people associate yoga as just postures and um yeah where are you at and forget journey? it's service and forget all the other things that yoga really does and totally. right yeah it's a it's an interesting it's been an interesting journey and just you know I went and saw it was like two weeks ago I went and saw my natural path doctor and she hasn't seen me since I started yoga yeah. and I walked in and I'm sitting across her desk and she's just kind of like staring at me and she goes I you and I, she couldn't even get a sentence out. I'm like, what? What's wrong? Yeah. And she's like, you don't even look the same. She's like, you don't look like the same person. She's like, I just don't, I can't believe it. Yeah. She was just like in such awe. Of, and a lot of that is mindset. Like, you know, I had negative, you want to talk about negative inner talk and it's still a battle. Like I'm not sitting around here I'm, and I would never, you know, I'm going to be transparent with you. I'm certainly not, you know, positive all the time, but my mindset is different than what it was six months ago, nine months ago, a year ago, because you have that inner dialogue of I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I, you know, is anyone gonna want to come to my yoga classes? What do I have to offer? What do I, you know, and I kind of have those battles in another one of my really toxic traits is, and I've kind of been like this my whole life, is if I think I'm gonna fail even a little, I'm probably gonna run from it because I don't want to fail I have like that just I don't want to fail like you you want to be there you want to at whatever it is the mom the wife the friend you know is it too personal a question to ask um and feel free not to answer it at all but what your role models in terms of femininity and like your mother journey was because obviously we reflect the people that we are around and what we're conditioned to believe is true. So I would love to know what your relationship is with your mom if she's still alive, like today, versus <coughs> what was modeled by her back in the day. Like all good if you want to abort the question and move to the next one. But um yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I would say she, my my mother she uh she was a she is she's still alive she's a a very good mother uh I'm not really sure how to go that she was kind of is kind of a um she has a really big heart and I, but I I think a lot of my mothering I would say I get from what I I didn't get yeah if that makes sense so um and and that's not knocking her because she'll probably you know but I think that you you either what you are given right what you're given as a child you're either gonna you're gonna go with that or hopefully if you didn't get it you're gonna want to make it better does that make sense um she was tough my mother was tough love and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, she, she was there for me. Was it a, per, is it a perfect relationship even now? No, <laughs> it's not. Um, but it's 
something that I've learned from. And that was kind of like my drive into being the best mom that I could be. You know, like I tell my kids, I can't even tell you how many times they love you. I love you. I love you. Cause I think that's so important to hear. And that necessarily wasn't something that I heard a lot growing up. And that doesn't mean that that's, that's wrong. I don't really know how my mother necessarily grew up either. Um, my parents did, they were divorced. Um, and my, you know, I had an older brother that died. So there was like a lot of things that went on there, but, um, for me, like, I don't know. I had like some of my friends' moms. I think I pulled from like just different things that you see, right? And you're like, oh, I want to be like this. Or, and I knew at like such a young age, too, like life goes by fast. I can remember feeling that at 10 years old, which is so weird for me, but I can just remember feeling like there's so much I need to get done, you know, and I'm like 10. (laughs) And, but now, on the flip side of that, taking, let's take it back to motherhood. Like I have um, a homeschool group that I'm part of, right? And it's young moms. Cause you remember, I'm, I've got the older kids, then we started again. So I kind of feel like the, the cool grandma of the group in some aspects of that, cause they're young, they're cute. They're, you know, got all these cute little kids on them. And then there's me. And I think one of the worst things that we can do as a mom is look at another mom who you can see like I look at these moms and you know they're freaking tired their kids are all over the place they're they're tired we're done we're tired and say you better enjoy it because time goes fast wow no of course you know they're gonna enjoy it there's moments to enjoy but that's not what they want to hear they want to hear like hey let me push your kid on the swing let me put your kid up on my shoulder and walk around with them go to the grocery store. Let me watch your kids. I think we have to get out of that whole enjoy it. Yes, we're obviously we're going to enjoy it. I've enjoyed it. There's been days that have been complete shit, but in general, I've enjoyed it, but that doesn't help a young mom. That is not. And that's like, I've actually been for years, I've been writing on this book and I'm finally like almost done. That kind of goes along with all of this and sharing the stories of the things that my kids have done. Cause let me tell you, they're absolutely crazy. But as an older mom now, I look at these young moms and, and there just needs to be more help. There needs to be a different kind of, you know, and I can remember the older mom saying, oh, enjoy it, enjoy it. It goes fast. And it does, you know, it does, but that doesn't mean we can't get help or we can't say I'm freaking tired. I'm tired. I need help. I need chocolate. Uh, I need something. <laughs> Calling it on I need, I need sleep. Yes, yeah, so many people yes. do. And you know, like what you were speaking to as well, um, some people do need just the words of affirmation or some people just need the quality time or the actions. And you're probably seeing what I'm alluding to here, but it's the love language. You know, if we're not getting that by our partner or our friends we're going to be we're not going to be turning up as our best person because the way that we are nourished is not being met and like really I think our love language should be added into like a basic need um, in terms of like food shelter love like all of that kind of stuff Um, if you're not being listened to like we know what being ignored um does to us like it's this sense of loneliness and you know I'm sure like I'm not a mother myself so I I can't relate to that but I've definitely connected to many mothers and people in general who just feel lonely on their path and they feel like they don't have that ability to give themselves permission to go I am tired I'm calling it I'm having a rest or I'm saying no to this because like if we go into the terms of like as a woman I think a lot of the time we fall into a very people pleasing um mentality yeah Yeah. so like you know I'm I'm sure I already feel like we're soul sisters so I'm just like yeah I'm sure I'm just preaching to the choir here but people pleasing is something that you know I'm continually working on of like does this fit for me versus 
is this going to please them to get the response I've wanted? And particularly in terms, like I find it very easy to connect with the masculine energy within myself. So in saying that I can connect to men easily when they're in their true masculine. And so it's like, you know, establishing that healthy barrier between feminine and masculine, masculine, because I love females as much as I love males I just find it easier to connect with that more dominant energy whereas I know that I really do need to step into like the water and the fluidity which allows me to bring the polarity to masculine vibes and I'm sure that you know that has really changed your relationship with your husband and your sons too yes you know my sons and I you know, we we're close and we literally talk about everything, yes. everything there's, and, you know, and it's kind of, and I don't even say they're uncomfortable talks because I've never made them uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think that that's important. Like, don't, don't make things uncomfortable, make them natural. Like my kids are going to come talk to me about all kinds of crazy things. And that's what I wanted. Cause guess what? I didn't have that. Yeah. And so I know the importance of that. Like, you know, there's teenagers. Are they telling me everything now? Of course not. But the important stuff, the stuff that I need to know, I know that we're going to have that conversation. Like that, that I'm not doubting. They know the door is open. And it is hard because like my, like I'm full, like full of fire energy, right? Like yeah. I always have to try to, I mean, you're around me for 10 minutes. You know, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm, you know, ah! and that's just, and so I always have to try to like bring that in because that can be overpowering to some people or it can be too much, you know, like too much Marie. And I get that. Like, but I think sometimes then we try to hold back too. Right. right? And I'm like, but this is who I am like it or don't like it. That doesn't necessarily mean I need to um, change my personality to people please in that way either. And, and because we do have such that people pleasing I can remember, I don't even know why this just came to me, but years ago, years ago, I think it was, is her name Terry Hatcher, Terry? She was in like the Desperate Housewives show. And I can remember reading an article about her. So I was like a young mom, young mom. And she was talking about in this article on how she would like burn the toast, but she would eat the burnt toast or she would give the burnt toast to her daughter because why should she eat the burnt toast, right? And I remember thinking, oh, what a horrible mother. How could you give your child the burnt toast? You are the mother, you eat the burnt toast. Like that was my takeaway then. Now, 22 years later, I'm not eating the burnt toast just because I'm the mom, <laughs> right? Like, Hi. but it's a total different, it, but I can tell you, like I, in my mind chastised her for that I just thought how horrible how can you make your child eat the burnt toast isn't that ridiculous isn't that like the most but do dumb thing ever to that bigger meaning of like when we haven't gone through something we don't have compassion and this is why people judge so often is that you know they go oh this is that and that's that and it's like until we've gone through something that we can relate meaning to we're so judgmental and it's not even judgmental of that other person. It's judging ourselves because we're so disconnected with, you know, something in them that's triggering us and we just react, right, versus respond. And I think you can probably relate in, in yoga is when we practice things on the mat and we practice in our movement and our breath of like we're here, we're present, we don't need to react and get into the sympathetic mode that when we leave the mat and we enter into our day those teachings start to filter into our interactions our communications our relationship our work and that's the cool thing about like practice in general and whatever you do is that you kind of can call it silly or you can feel silly starting it or go oh what's this going to do for me and I love that you know it does evolve and self-awareness and self-care isn't it's not a short-term fix it's not a pill that you just pop and it's fixed it's um it's a it's a lifetime practice and that's why it's called practice is that it never stops <laughs> right um, it's not perfection it's practice totally right. and by the way I'm just like if we ever hang out slash when we hang out 
<laughs> whoever meets who first I feel like we need to just establish some sort of a boundary that our fire doesn't get too hot because I feel like we will just go like nutso in person it's like ah I, <laughs> combust we just combust no I you know it's it's kind of just fun just to kind of see those certain personalities but I think like fires know like yeah their time together has to be and I like growing up I wanted oh like that soft sweet spoken like I wanted that so freaking bad and then God was like here I'm gonna make all of your friends that way <laughs> right like all of my friends got like these sweet sweet voices sweet disposition and I'm just not freaking like that but you know it's okay it's it is what it is <laughs> I can probably safely assume you're also into like rap and hip hop. Here's me like rapping on the way to my yoga classes, getting in yes. there, putting on chanting. And I'm like, hey guys, um, this yeah. is who I am. But it's like, you can still give across the feminine energy and still be charged. And it's not like walking in there, cranking Eminem, but it's like, oh, you can safely assess who you share things with or or appropriate environment for things so yeah like um and you, hit, you hit a certain age too like I'm kind of now where eh, I don't care you know and I like obviously all genres of music but like on my like in my Instagram stories when I post my yoga videos yeah. it's like I'll I'll do country I'll do Eminem yes. I'll do you know like I'm all over the place you know so it's just kind oh, of yeah. and that's okay Babe, who are your teachers? Like, who do you look to when you go, like, this is someone who I really learned from um, that has been consistent from the get-go? Or have you, like, established mentors, role models, slash do you have, like, business mentors that you look for guidance now? Oh, like, you mean, like, yoga teachers? Is that what you mean? Or like in general for life? It's just in life. Like it can be yoga, but it can just be who you look to, to like kind of reflect oh. the qualities that you. <laughs> oh, man. Um, oh, see, this is why I needed questions ahead of time. I'm so bad at <laughs> coming up. No, nah, I love spontaneous. Um, see what comes out. You know, like, I, honestly, if I'm being honest, uh, first and foremost is God you know like I that kind of and I has not I'm not always straight and narrow clearly because I love Jesus but I like to swear um and so but that's kind of always kind of been my my north like okay that's where I want to go I I and I always try to the one thing now as I'm getting older too is I don't ever want to be the smartest person in the room, the smartest friend. I always want to make sure that I have people around me that are growing me, that are inspiring me. And I have like a really good group um, of tight core people. You know, I have, um, my husband used to be in the military for almost a decade. And so I have a small group of army wives that um, inspire me daily. You know, I have a really good friend from high school that, um, you know, she's just kind of like my, my, my force. She's, you know, just, it's kind of awesome just to have those people in your life. I I'm not one who like, you know, falls at Hollywood stars. Like that's not, no, sorry. You're just people who should have a toilet too. So I'm just not one who like that. You're not going to get a name like that out of me. Um, but I just think it's important to just find those people. I, I mean, and it can be anybody like, Okay, here's a really dumb answer to that, but I have a mailman and his name is Bob, which was also my father's name. And he's an older guy and I love Bob. Bob just inspires me every day to want to smile at him, to say hello to him. My kids love Bob. Bob's wife died a few years ago. Like I know Bob, you know what I mean? And it's just like those small people. It doesn't have to be these, these awesome people. It can be your mailman who makes you want to be a better person. Girl, that just speaks so, like, I just want to mic drop it there in a way because <laughs> I often bring that up of, like, you know, this question that um, I like to ask people, it comes back to just the really basic and simply beautiful answers of the people that are close to us. And like you said, it doesn't have to be 
the person who's got the big name. It can be the person at the grocery store of like, how are you treating them and how are you showing up to them when nobody's watching you, when nobody's looking at the words that you say or the actions that you do. It's like, how do you show up when you speak to Bob? And it's like, already I know that you just have such a warm soul that, you know, that cares about people from any walk of life and I think that is really where the true teachings of yoga come through of all inclusiveness like we don't discriminate and um and when you get to that point where you're not judging someone by their clothes or their role or their name or their sexuality it's like gosh so many more things open up like most people just have a story they want to tell and the angry ones just don't really have a way of directing it into a um like a way of like they don't really know how to communicate it and and this is where like I think you mentioned earlier like communication is such a huge part of your life now and um and I guess as well like something that I'm curious about like because you experienced the things that you did in your upbringing that has led you to be the person you are today um how do you approach life lessons for your children seeing as how you don't want to like um have that equal and opposite reaction even though it's inevitably going right. to exist <laughs> I don't yeah, know it and, you know, <laughs> and, and it's funny because my my father was very much my father and mother could not have been more opposite and so my father was very much like oh you're going to make the mistakes and you're going to learn from it where my mother was like you can't make the mistakes, you know what I mean? And so it's kind of like finding that balance with my kids because like, as a mom, you don't wanna see your kids fail, yeah. right? You don't wanna see them make the mistakes, but sometimes you just have to be like, hey, you know, like, remember that time I told you, but I'm not gonna tell you I told you. And you know, like my 22 year old daughter, we, we just actually um, went to Florida together uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I met one of my best friends there and we had kind of talked about our relationship now. And, you know, it was hell when she was a teenager. She was like, she made me question my ability <laughs> of being a mom. And, and, you know, she's like, man, I, and she'll say, I'm sorry. I put you through that. I'm sorry. And I'm like, it's growing. It, it's growing. And she's just an awesome kid now and she, or an adult you know young adult and she's still gonna make mistakes but um you know I'm <clears throat> 29 and I'm still making some so you know <laughs> it's kind of it happens but it's you kind of I I let them fall a little bit on the things that I think that they need to fall on and and other things I you see like something big is coming towards them and you want to be like don't do it stop you know but you just have to find that a happy medium and every kid is different you know like they don't really tell you that if you're pushing them out like <laughs> they're so so different and so you can't parent them all the same it doesn't work and you can't as you're in that moment the the 20 year old and the 15 year old and the 17 year old and the six year old they don't understand that you can't parent them the same do you know what i mean because it just doesn't work i could take one's phone away and the kid that's never on his phone, he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> you know? right. Like, here you go, have my phone. And so it's different, you know, and, and, and so it's kind of like a fun, as they're getting, as the older ones are getting older now, of course, they like to say, you know, oh, Tommy gets away with everything, you know? And I'm like, Tommy doesn't do anything. I mean, Timmy and Ben, is when you read my book, they were literally horrific children like not her they were just into everything you know oh the roof the this the, I mean they were everywhere and Tommy just wants to please he does not like to cause any waves ever he's very much you know and so I'm just like I guys he's not you <laughs> and so you just have to find as a parent find that happy find that happy medium and and have grace with yourself because like I said I fail continually as a parent and I think something that I learned in the last honestly just in the last few years is you've got to be the person not even a parent the person mm -hmm. who says I'm sorry I messed up as your mom I messed up 
And I, that's hard to do, right? Yeah. And it's hard to do as a person. It's hard to do as a friend just to say, hey, I'm sorry I messed up. Please forgive me. That can be hard for people. Um, and I'm still learning that. There's still times where I'm like, oh, I know I need to go in there and say I'm freaking sorry. You know, like I still have those moments. I'm not perfect. But the kids need to see too that you're not perfect. Because I think for so many, especially in those early years, I just wanted to be perfect. Whatever that perfect mom was, I had to be it. And like I said, my husband was deployed. He was gone all the time. It was just a whole, you know, I had a lot on my plate and I, as I'm carrying all these plates, carrying all these plates, I didn't want anything to fall. And the only thing that really did fall was me and who I was. That's what I lost. And that's what I don't want young moms to do. It's so important to just learn that lesson at a younger age. It's so true. Like, you know, I think especially what yoga teaches us is kind of <clears throat> what we already know funnily enough and I think this progression of all of the things that we buy online courses for and I'm a serial online course buyer because I just am so <laughs> interested in so many things um you're probably a Gemini as well let's be real but <clears throat> um it's important to remember that there comes a point where we need to stop consuming and we need to realize that what we have is already a gift and like through your motherhood and and just through life in general it's like this this process of just uncovering everything we already know and figuring out a way of oh my god I love your cup how we best um how we best teach that to others and and put that into our purpose and our passion that cup is so epic like it's actually so big and I want to know what you're drinking right now I'm drinking tea I swear it's just tea <laughs> wake up and be awesome is what it says wake up and be awesome yeah you are awesome you're such a legend uh, uh, thank you <laughs> who who like what's your mode of learning how like I know you said you love music which I do as well but I take it you're probably also like an audiobook kind of gal and also mm -hmm. mixed in with like um the reading the physical book what's your most yeah like, I yeah tell me hands on I'm I like yeah. to do I'm a doer like but I mean I listen to audiobooks all the time but for me to really like if it's a really good book I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna highlight yeah, <laughs> like, I'm gonna, but I'm just I'm a doer I have to have my hands on like if I have my kids and I'm like hey show me like, you know, how to do this on Instagram or something. And they'll take my phone and I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to hold my phone. You need to tell me so I can do it. You know, like I, that's, I'm definitely a hands-on. Yeah. I got to do it person. So what's the book that you would recommend to people to like go all out and get the actual book? What's one you would actually recommend getting sent and oh delivered in the mail? One, two, three, go. One. <laughs> okay. Uh, the one that I just, I finished twice on Audible and now I just ordered it. Oh my God, I can't think of what it's called. It's um, the audacity to be the audacity to be a queen or the audacity to be queen. I think it's something in that. And I listened to it twice and now I've just ordered it because I've picked up different things on it each time. And it's and I don't even know who wrote it. Um, but that's when like like when I take a shower and I'm getting ready in the morning, I always like have something going and I've been listening to that again. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Cause it's just finding that queenhood, that femininity, right. That remembering, you know, I'm a sexual being, I'm, I'm all of these things that you just forget about. Yeah. And that one has just been, that's one of my, my favorites right now. I love that. I'm going to check it out. And meanwhile, if you haven't already heard of her, check out, jesse lee ward on um on your podcast she's like called hashtag boss lee so b-o-s-s-l-e-e -E. i just feel like because we're so similar you'll just vibe out listening to the way she speaks and it kind of just reminds you that you can be your weird and quirky and loud boisterous self but still be you know you can still doll up and be like queen do you know what i mean i just love it right Awesome. I definitely will check her out. Wicked. Um, so for the people watching, listening, I'll include this in the show notes and, um, but I'll just like 
to get you to tell people where they can um, find you in terms of social media or if you're best contacted through Instagram, Facebook, email, YouTube, put it all out there. Sure. Um, so on Instagram, I'm modern day hippie mom. Yep. Just plug that in. And then on Facebook, it's just me, Marie Bristol. Um, so yeah, I tend to be more on Instagram. I don't know. It just kind of depends, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on those two things. I am not techie. So you will not find me on YouTube ever. I promise. <laughs> Not my gift. It nice and simple. And when your book yeah. comes out, um, I'm sure I'll yes. stay in contact with you anyway. But um, oh, yeah. please just keep me informed of like events that you're doing, things that you're putting out there. And I'll, I'll be happy to put that out to my people, to my listeners, viewers, all of the likes. Because, you know, when we hear people's stories like yours, so often we think I'm just, you know, I'm just modern day hippie mum. But someone listening to this would go, oh my God, like Marie's epic and I want to, you know, stalk her down and who knows who might be listening to this. It could be your neighbour for all we know. Right. Um, you know, and it's just like we get so, like I think social media can keep us so confined but it can also be so expansive. So that's really my intention for this platform. So, um, yeah, so, so damn grateful that you have come on uh, today. Thank story. you. And yeah, you've just got epic vibes. So I know that we'll have to get you back on to check in with where your book writing is, um, just to check in, in in general. If you just want to have a chat, I'm always yeah, down awesome. for that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been fun. <laughs> you stick on for the chat. I'm just going to sign out here and then just stick on for a couple of minutes and we'll say goodbye to each other there so thank you everybody for listening watching please give us a rate and a review just so we can give you you know the most value out of these episodes I always love who I get onto this I kind of it's like a mixed bag and the people that keep coming in like Marie it's just blowing my mind with um all of the different perspectives with the stories that they have. So again, thank you, beautiful soul. And we shall see you when we have an encore for you to come on. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs>